Italy. Um, they don't speak any English here, but they seem to understand Spanish, which is good. So uh, yeah, we're going to try and moor up um, in the, I think the yacht club possibly. But yeah, we need a rest before we carry on really. And um, get some gas so we can make tea. And uh, yeah, wait for the wind to go in the right direction again. But we're here, this is Sicily. Pizza! Pizza, pizza pasta, pasta, spaghetti, rigatoni. Pasta with pesto. <laughs> You see, they understand us. as deep as the sea no matter how rough things may come to be you and me we're family sing home hey long for the ride home hey i'll stay by your side home hey you'll always be And um, obviously you've got mobile data now and internet. Yes. Have you been in touch with your friends? Which country? Which country? Um, okay, Spanish there. friends. Spanish friends. Anna, I'm mostly in contact and Blanca a bit. England? Uh, Hazel, I'm mostly in contact, but I'm slowly losing contact with people there. Okay. In the Caribbean, I have Millie, Jill and Amelia. We've got a group chat. Also in Cartagena in Spain. Oh, well, yeah. it's also in Spain. I'm slightly in touch with Liam and Fergus. In a strong southerly, this is a really good harbour to shelter in. Mazara del Vallo is an important fishing port in Sicily. Mazar means the rock and it is just 10 kilometres from the coast of Africa. Pretty much everything gets washed up on these shores. One of the first jobs that had to be done was repair the rip in the main sail. Right, we're going in search of ice cream. Yeah. We're heading for ice cream. It's a drab little town, but every now and again there's like a like a doorway and you put your head through and then inside there's like this kind of like the gutted remains of some sort of dome cathedral type thing. It's almost like like a like a gothic horror film set and there's like half cherubs kind of sat on the columns. It's like it's almost like a set of a Peter Greenaway film. You also almost expect sort of naked bodies sort of everywhere. Oh I'll be told to shut up. <laughs> this really weird orthonological museum just kind of tucked in the corner of this square. If I could be a bird, I'll show you which bird I would be. I want to be, I want to be like a medium bird, like... So it was time to find a shop and reprovision the boat. So we just walked for miles looking for a superstore and I found one but they don't really believe me. Look. Come on!
gonna make pizza and watch a movie because tomorrow we're probably heading south again. We were just about to leave and pay, but they don't take cards because the machine's not working. So we've got to go back into town and find a bank and get some money out and maybe an ice cream too. It's an ice cream with a brioche. It's dripping. It's a chocolate butty. <laughs> Got a chocolate butty. <laughs> Um, so we tried to leave yesterday afternoon and we didn't realise that underneath it's like spaghetti junction there are like lazy lines just crossing all over the place. So we've got something around the propeller, it's probably one of the million lazy lines. <laughs> What's happened Dad? We've got a rope around the propeller, one of the mooring lines, one of the lazy lines is wrapped around the propeller. And I think what happened is when another boat came in, I think one of the lazy lines had been draped over our prop. So as soon as we put it in gear, it just wrapped around. So we had at least at least two lines wrapped around the propeller. I'm swimming, Daddy. I had to go down with a knife and just, just hack away at it until we got it clear. So, so we've had some lines wrapped around the propeller and obviously mum and dad don't want to pay for an experienced diver so dad's gone down and he's trying to unwrap it with a knife and his hands. Third time he's gone under. Apparently the um, prop is wrapped around three times, I mean five times on the line. One side, it's kind of, one's jammed in. The other side's free, so I'm going to do the free one just to see if I can jam it. Yeah. Fourth time he's gone under. So, uh, Dad's been under, well, um, and has dived four times and kind of some luck. It's jammed right in. Right, so there's definitely two lines caught round. So Woody's going to go down with the knife that I got from the crew of the RNLI in Brighton. So hopefully it will bring us some good luck. There's lines all over the place. There's got three lines in there. Is the knife working? Yeah, it's good. Did you bash up it? Did you bash your head? Okay. I'm pretty confident that the, uh, that the lines are clear now. So we checked that there were no lazy lines underneath and we decided to test the engine to see whether it sounded okay. It doesn't seem to have affected the shaft any. We've got a C drive. We turn the engine on and we put it into forwards. We listened to any strange sounds. There was no strange sounds. Then we went into reverse. There was no sort of clunking or anything to show that the, the gears were all mismatched. And we've, we've just tried it now and there's no there's no vibration, but obviously we won't be able to tell until we get going. We checked to see whether there's any wash coming out the back or forth. You see the propeller was actually going round and it all seems okay. So now all we can do is go out and see whether there's any strange vibrations. But by then we'll kind of be off the dock, so it'd be quite difficult trying to get back if there is a problem. And we also checked the transmission fluid and there wasn't milky colour because we know that if it's a milky colour, it means there's water getting mixed up into the fluid. It's a bit nerve-wracking, I mean, it's, it's nothing we can do really, you know, we've got boats on either side, we've got a strong crosswind and we've got lazy lines crossing over all over the place. A bit of a nightmare mooring really, with this guy and this guy living in about two hours, so we hope that we can get out of here. So after 
after a few problems with the mainsail getting stuck, we managed to get going and everything sounded okay. The engine and propeller all sounded fine. So now we're heading down the coast of Sicily. We're heading to um, Syracuse and there we're gonna pick up a couple of friends and head across to Greece. So we're kind of like getting halfway through our big trek across the Med to Turkey. Another sunset. Okay, so tonight we're going to have Sicilian pasta. Pasta? Yeah. And? And bread, butter and bread. And bread, and this special um, pomodorini. Siciliano. So it's tomato, it's a special tomato paste from Sicily. Seeing as we're going around the country Sicily. Oh, careful. So um, that's what we're going to have tonight. Simple meal because we're underway for the night. So something that goes down easily and stays down easily. So the next day, with the sea being a bit calmer, we can get back into some serious homeschooling. So after homeschooling, the kids keep themselves occupied in all sorts of different ways. So we arrive in Syracuse. It's the first time we've had the wind on the nose, which is good, because we had quite a nice sail for most of the time. We only put the engine on for a bit. But yeah, this is where we pick up a couple of friends who are going to crew with us to Greece and Turkey. All going all right so far. Kill the pasta! Why? As deep as the sea, no matter how rough things may come to be, you and me, we're family. Sing home. So, this is a really big thank you to our patrons for pledging to Mothership Adrift and supporting us on our journey as we travel around the world. This allows us to make stories and then share these stories with you. If you want to become a patron, it's really easy. Click on the patron button and join our family in this journey around the world. And if you want to do it, 